Hey everybody, my name is Jen and this is Jen Geigley Knits. This past month has gone so quickly, probably because we've had a lot going on. It's been really busy. Um, last weekend was Knit for Food on Saturday, then I went to Fiberpalooza, and then my daughter played a show with her band, and they've been playing a lot lately, which makes things extra busy. There's practices and shows. Um, they have two shows this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, so it's getting intense. We're working on merch. Um, I have a friend who does like DIY band merch and he said we could borrow his button maker. So we're gonna have like a button making party at our house and get some pizza. And it's just really fun seeing these kids do their thing and express themselves writing music and you know learning it as a band. And it's just really cool. Um, they're all still in high school and so talented. And so that's been a really fun part of this past month is kind of watching them play and learn and grow together as a band and so and play all these shows. They have a whole bunch of shows coming up. Um, we have a safe space prom, like LGBTQ safe prom at our Des Moines Art Center, which is, I teach classes there as well. And so they have like their own special prom and their band got asked to play the prom. So they get to go to the prom and play the prom, which is a really big deal. It's kind of the teenage dream. So I'm very excited for them. Um, but yeah, last weekend was Knit for Food, Fiberpalooza, and the show. So anyway, Knit for Food. Let's get to that, <laughs> just on its own. Um, I'm just looking at the total donations raised. It's, knit for Food always blows my mind. And this is maybe my third or fourth year participating um, it's organized by Laura Nelkin. It is wonderful. Anyone can join. You can join next year if you'd like. Anyone can can knit and fundraise. Even if you, you know, raise $100 or $25 or $50, or maybe you knit along with the local knitters in your area or with your local yarn shop or make a little team. Um, there's a lot of different ways to participate and I highly encourage you next March to join us if you didn't already this year, which I know a lot of you did. And thank you all so much for your generous donations. Like it's so heartwarming and beautiful to see um, the amount we hit last Saturday. I couldn't, it's, it blows my mind every time. So my first goal was to raise $500 and then I raised it to a thousand and then you guys blew me away and went to 2000. And by the end of Saturday night, I had raised $2,500, so thank you so much. That provides a lot of meals to a lot of people. Um, these organizations make your dollar go really far, and so it really means a lot, and you are making a difference. So thank you so much for your donations. The total amount raised by everyone for Knit for Food ended up being $379,000 and a little bit more. Oh, $379,010 dollars was the total. It, so that's incredible. So thank you. I'll stop talking every single week about Knit for Food now because it's over, but next year, join us for sure. It's always in March. Um, you just go to just Google Knit for Food and you can click join the Knit-a-thon if you want to join or, you know, donate to the group and it just, it really makes a difference. So thank you so much. That was awesome. As far as knitting stuff goes this week, I worked on my design stuff a lot, but I also finished a whole entire sweater. Um, if you've been watching the past few weeks, you know this is the Aperture Sweater by Alicia Plummer, and I knit it in Noro Hanui yarn. It's like kind of a natural, they have a lot of natural colors and it's really, really nice. It's wool, but it's soft, very squishy, very warm. And I love, love, love this simple sweater and how it turned out. Um, I actually measured it against my warmthness sweater from last winter, because that sweater, I nailed the measurements for me personally, as far as length, sleeve length. This has a similar sleeve that just, um, you can do it a little bit longer and then you can cuff it, which is what I like to do. Um, simple crew neck that is folded in and sewn down, uh, raglan, a little bit oversized, but just like a super perfect comfy sweatshirt. And I already wanna make, I think I wanna make another one in gray. I wanna make another one in black. I know I would just wear the heck out of these easy sweaters. And this 
there's like a worse weight. So it's a little bit, you know, cozy and warm. We're still kind of in the colder weather, although it's warming up here soon into the 60s, which will feel like a vacation because it's been so cold this week. It's been cold here. So and I think we, we even had some snow and there's been snow all around us. Anyway, we need spring, but in the meantime, I am going to be cozy in my sweater and I think I should probably just try this on. Um, I seamed it last night and then I did a quick steam because I didn't want to wet block it in case it didn't. I want to show you today, so I didn't want it to be wet, but really just with a steam block, I think it looks really nice and even. And this yarn is a little bit thick, thin, like Noro usually is, but not, not like super inconsistent. And it does have some fun areas of like lighter, darker, natural materials kind of woven in there. But yeah, let's try it on. Okay, moment of truth. Um, I really think I could have knitted the sweater a lot faster than I did, but I was distracted and working on a bunch of things at the same time. And then I had those design projects come up, but Really, this was a very quick knit. I think it was on US 8s for the body, US 7s for the ribbing. Um, classic worsted weight. But yeah, let's try it on. I'm hoping it's just like a sweatshirt and I think it is, yes. This is exactly what I was hoping for. This is like my test for sleeve length is like arms outstretched. I don't like it too short, like I don't like it to creep up. This is just right so I can cuff them if I want to or not. The length hits me right at the hip and that's um, the length of my warmthness sweater that I knitted recently that I really like. I don't like things too cropped, but like hip length is perfect for this kind of sweater, I think. The size is good, the ease is good. I think I'm pretty happy with it. So this is Aperture by Alicia Plummer. She's a friend of mine and I just really wanted to knit this sweater when I saw it and now I'm really happy I did. I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this very classic, neutral, nice pullover. It's really nice. Just in case you're curious, I normally knit a size 38 to 40 inch bust, usually on sweater patterns, not always, but most of the time I'm in that range. And for the sweater, I knitted the size two, which has a finished, finished chest measurement of 43.5 inches. And I'm sure that's probably pretty close to what it is. I love the oversizedness. I think it's meant to be a little bit boxy and roomy, which I really like, and I love that when I cuff the sleeve, it hits right above my watch. This is like perfect for me. <laughs> so I'm really happy with how this sweater turned out. I will just mention, and you probably already know this, but in case you don't, um, some people are always after like the perfect fitting sweater. How do you get a sweater with just the right fit? And it is simpler than you might think if you kind of struggle with this. Um, cause we all have different ways we want things to fit. I have to have like a longer sleeve, a certain length of sleeve is what feels right on me. Some people like them shorter. Um, I always have my sweaters hit at the hip. Some people like them cropped or longer. And these are really easy adjustments to make. Sometimes you want a deep raglan and sometimes you don't. You want a closer fitting sleeve and a closer fitting armhole. You can adjust armholes. You can adjust sleeve length very easily and body length very easily. And um, I'm sure you've heard this tip before, but seriously, just get out a favorite sweatshirt out of your closet or favorite fitting sweater out of your closet. It can be store-bought, it can be anything, and lay that out as you're knitting and match the body length to exactly what you want, the sleeve length exactly to what you want, and then the arm opening too, you can kind of adjust like you can stop knitting a little sooner. Your body will be a little bit narrower if you stop sooner and your sleeve will be a little bit narrower. You have to kind of calculate and swatch and do a little gauge, you know, counting math to figure it out, but it can definitely be adjusted. So don't be afraid to do that because for all the time it takes to knit a sweater, you do really want it to fit well. So that's just my little tip of the day, which you probably already knew, but just in case you didn't, there it is. Also, in case you're curious, I used three skeins of the Noro Hanui and I still have this much left. So it was probably more like two and a half skeins, which is just mind blowing that you can get that much of a sweater out of 
doesn't seem like that much yarn, but it really goes a long way. Um, I really, really, really like this yarn and want to do more things with it. And luckily I have a whole good amount left that I can make a hat or something else. So I love that. And I love this yarn and I love this sweater. And I'm really happy to finish one of those projects. If you watched a few weeks ago, I cast on like five sweaters in a week and I just kind of lost my mind and cast on all the things like we sometimes just want to do. And it did feel really good. I'm not gonna lie, that was really fun. And it's still fun to have all these projects kind of around me in various states of like, they're all in different places and it's, but yeah, I can grab whatever one I'm feeling like working on and that's been kind of fun. The only one I made progress on this past week besides finishing this was the Crowberry sweater from the Modern Daily Knitting Field Guide called Moss by Helene Magnuson. So this got a little bit further. I finished one skein and I'm on skein two. I still have a ways to go, but this is on larger needles too and it'll go pretty quickly, I think. I just have like nine inches-ish, maybe 10, and then I get to start the color work yoke and the dividing for the sleeves and all that fun stuff because this is bottom up. And so I missed the knit along deadline. I think this was supposed to be done in March, like for the real bang out a sweater, modern daily knitting field guide knit along. But I'm sure there's other people still working on their crowberries. It's okay. <laughs> and if you, there was, there was a time that I was working on a different crowberry that was gray and I sort of abandoned that one. Um, I was knitting the wrong size, something was off and I held it up and I'm like, this is not right. So <laughs> I started over and I'm just using Lopi and this is gonna be colors that are similar to the sample that is shown in the book. Let me grab it, hold on. This is the book, this is the field guide and the crowberry is shown here in this rust color with some green moss color work. Why do I keep passing the picture of it? Um, here's the bottom of the sleeve. Um, it's inspired by the moss in Iceland. Here it is. And then there's little crowberries that are bobbles that are knitted into the yoke. And so I'm kind of going for this type of colorways, but we'll see. So this, I am kind of feeling like hunkering down on one thing at a time now out of the list of things I have going, but I'm also, I've also been working on the Noctuidae cowl, the butterfly cowl from Brooklyn General. And I've also been working a little bit on the color work sweater that was like red and cream, the sandness sweater that I was working on too. They're all like, I'll do here a little bit here and there. It's fine. It's, it's, it's coming along. The only other thing I have this week is I have an acquisition of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in these natural colors. There's like a dark brown, a medium brown, oatmeal, and this natural light color, and they go very well with the sweater I'm wearing. Um, I know, I'm like, you know when you kind of start to dress like your pet and maybe knit like your pet? <laughs> I've been wearing like black sweatpants with like a cream sweatshirt and vice versa and like some like is this my new color palette because I have a Siamese cat <laughs> I don't know but people have noticed like my family's like you're dressed like our cat I don't know I mean probably not it's just neutrals and black that's like what I do but if you watched last week you'll see that I saw I found a vintage Mary Maxim Siamese cat pattern which is basically a basic sweater like this. I can't remember if it's raglan or not. It might be seamed um, on the sleeves, but it has a giant Siamese cat in the middle of the sweater. And do I need to make it? Yes, probably. And then Lion Brand had a buy two, get one free sale. Otherwise, I mean, I don't need these huge quantities of these other colors, like the cat colors that I'm not gonna need very much of, but um, these skeins are so reasonably priced. You get so much yardage. And I know I'll, I'll use these neutrals for something else. So I just went for it and got these perfect natural worsted weight colors. I think my main color of the sweater is gonna be this medium brown. Does it have a name? Brown Heather. I think that's the main color because the color work um, in the chart is really like these three almost exactly. So, and that's like what my cat looks like. 
So this will be really fun, I think. And it's something where you could easily duplicate stitch the cat or you can do stranded knitting. It's really like, hmm, I don't know. Or probably intarsia, whatever, whatever I'm trying to say. But those are my Siamese cat colors with this main color. That's my plan. I got such a super deal on this. These are 465 yards. This goes so far. If I thought this went really far, this goes really far. And so, I don't know, it'll be kind of fun to cast that on and make a cat sweater for the crazy cat lady. So like I mentioned earlier, last Saturday was kind of a fun-filled fiber fest field trip knitting day for me. <laughs> there was a lot of things going on. It was a, it was like a long day, but, um, and it was also knit for food. So in the morning I was doing knit for food and then I left and went here and came back knit for food and then had to do this and then knit for food and then went to my daughter's show and then checked the knit for food totals and like finished it all out. And it was just like an awesome, fun filled jam packed day. <laughs> but uh, my friend Erica and I started off the day in the morning, jumping in the car and driving to Winterset, Iowa for Fiberpalooza, which is our Midwest kind of Iowa based fiber fest. And it's in a school gym, so it's kind of small and compact, but there was a lot of vendors there. Um, a lot of Iowa farmers with their goods and their yarn and all kinds of things. There's pottery, there's like a good mix of all sorts of different things there. So it's really fun. I try to go every year if I can, and there's lots of friends that you always see there. So it's the, um, the Spinners and Weavers Guild was there, and it's always fun to see all the different crafts and all that good stuff. So we hopped in the car and went to that, and then um, Winterset is also the home of Rusty Star Alpacas, the farm, which Erica and I have been to before. If you saw my Vlogmas during December, we visited the alpacas then. And so since we were in town, you can't really drive out of town without passing Rusty Stars. So we stopped to see and visit the alpacas and they also have a new llama that we got to meet. So that was really fun. Um, it was pretty cold, so we didn't stay too long, but it was a really fun day. So I will show you all that footage of Fiberpalooza and Rusty Stars right here. Look at her! <laughs> oh my god! 
My gosh, are you kidding me? Like so lovable. Oh my goodness. I not handle.
week, um, Dinah has decided to grace us with her presence. Thanks for hanging out with us. I've been uploading a new video every Saturday, so stop back next week for a new video. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, I have a playlist called Knit With Me, and that has a lot, a lot, a lot of videos just like this. So if you're bored, go watch those. And yeah, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye.